Hello and welcome back to the sideboard here at Star City Games Worcester. My name is Ruben Bressler and I am joined by Ray Robillard. Hello. And he has brought something interesting to the table. We aren't doing a deck tech. We're <laughs> sort of doing four, but not really. We're doing a format tech. Something mm -hmm. that I, I saw going on uh, in the side of the room that, that I've decided to call Big Game. I think that's a great name. Uh, tell us a little bit about what this format is. Okay, it's... Um Basically the same thing as uh, normal Magic using a lot of older cards, but with these oversized 6x9 cards that right. were given out um, as prize cards for the arena season, which was kind of like a, a casual local game store promotion that Wizards ran back in uh, 1997, 98, and 99. Um, and so, you know, most of them were given away as prizes for that, some were given away to people who went to Gen Con those years, there was one that came in a... Um, uh, I believe in a comic book. So you get them from a number of different sources during those years. Absolutely. And they made enough of them. And they also mm -hmm. made, very importantly, basic lands. That, kind of uh, those. Yeah, absolutely. That you could actually make decks out of them. Mm -hmm. So what you've done is you've collected enough of them mm -hmm. to be able to make four 40 card decks. That's correct. And they're playable. And you yep. can you play them against each other. Uh -huh. And all you need is a huge amount of table space. Uh -huh. And you can play some big game magic. Yeah, as we, we put together a couple tables here to play. Absolutely. And it was a ton of fun. I got to uh -huh. play a game myself, or a couple games myself. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the four decks that we have here, there's a uh, Grixis-colored, black-based yep. deck that has Soul Kanar, the Swamp King, and also has things like Black Knight. Mm -hmm. uh, Guardian Beast, Juzum Jin. Lots of big black cards. Also, um, uh, Dark Banishing is its yep. uh, kill spell of choice, which is very useful against this deck right here, which has Thorn Elemental in the green-white... Uh, does it also have red, or is this just green? Uh, this one, I believe, is green white. Uh, this one is green white green, red. Red and white blue red. And then there's white blue red on the end here. This mm -hmm. green white deck is just gi giant, enormous creatures. Autumn Willow and Thorn Elemental, as you see here on the top. This one in the middle, also giant, enormous creatures, but sl uh, slightly quicker, I think, mm -hmm. as opposed to being uh, slightly beefier with uh, Balduvian Horde as one of the major beat sticks, and of course. You gotta love that card. Everybody loves Vesuvian Doppelganger. Earlier today it came up that I cast a Vesuvian Doppelganger uh, to legend rule out Solkanar for at least one last time before the rule changes. Absolutely, which actually brings up an interesting point. Mm -hmm. These cards were made in 97, 98, 99. Yes. But you use current rules. Correct. So you're gonna you're gonna keep using the current rules as opposed to going back to first of all batches. But yeah. let's not even talk about no, batches. Or interrupts. Damage, on, damage on the stack, mm -hmm. things like that. We're gonna keep current with the rules despite right. the old cards. There, there's a couple of house rules that we've come up with and also rules governing deck construction. Um, the, each deck has at least one, if not multiple, black lotuses, which can create for some very explosive plays. Uh, to balance that we put also to add fun to the format, uh, some chaos orbs in each of the decks. So that allows you to, you know, if your opponent just throws out a turn three uh, Shivan Dragon, right. it kind of gives you a chance to stay in the game. Yeah, some decks have access to Swords to Plowshares, some decks have access to Dark Banishing, yep. but the options are few and far between just because of what's been printed. Right, it was very difficult to, to build four decks that had a unique feel, especially as I was mentioning to you before, um, there are only three of the five Ice Age pain lands. Right. They didn't print Sulphur Springs or Underground River. Right. Uh, so the unfortunate for the Grixis, Grixis deck, deck has to use. Fortunately, City of Brass is in this it's deck. nicely. Now, I want to talk about the cards themselves, because as uh -huh. you can see, they are put in, not really sleeves, what they've been put in here is, uh, if, for those of you that have worked or been to comic book shops for yep. magic events, you'll see that these are boards for comic books. Mm -hmm. um, and you decided to use these as the sleeves. Um, yep. and, and then uh, boards, you know, the backs is, is kind of, just to, to make them less flimsy. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and also keep them nice and, uh, mm -hmm. and and playable for many years to come. Correct. Now, it was brought up earlier that you had, had partially considered laminating them or doing some other sort of card yeah, backing. There have been a number of different things thrown around, uh, things that people have suggested to, to, to maybe include some of the smaller, like, box topper cards to give the the form and a newer feel. Right, because because you can use the same back for any any card, the card on the front can be any size. Right. Uh, so you could include, for example, uh, Emrakul the Eons Torn, which was mm -hmm. a box topper for Rise of the Eldrazi. Some of the large commander cards. Yep. Uh, there, was a, there was a promotional uh, Acroma's Memorial right. from Future Sight that I don't think mm -hmm. was the card, it was just an advertisement, but it could still it, it, be basically be the same mm -hmm. thing. So, um, do you want to 
have you thought about expanding it to that kind of I, thing? I've been throwing the idea around. What I, what I think I want to do first is uh, look at getting some more of the hard to acquire cards. Um, some of the ones that, like you'll see here where it talks about it being a uh, first. I'm sorry. Uh, here's a good example. The second place prize okay. uh, for the summer season. Sure. Uh, those you had to actually place high enough in the arena league in order to win them. They're a little harder to get. So cards like Curse Scroll, um, Vesuvian Doppelganger. Uh, you know, I might only have one or possibly sure. two of those. You were also mentioning that there is a uh, Rebecca Guay or Sarah Rebecca Angel. Guay, uh, yeah, Illustrate it's quite expensive. Sarah Angel. It's, it's very rare and mm -hmm. a little expensive. That, uh, that you would be keeping your eye on for also. Yeah, because you know, it's, it would certainly add a little, a little flair to, to the decks that were going. Now, yeah. another thing that we, okay. when we, sorry, when we no, were sorry. looking up cards online, there's uh -huh. another deck that's possible to build. Yes. And that's the Prosperous Bloom combo deck. Mm -hmm. Because this came out in 97, 98, 99, that's right about the same time that the Prosperous Bloom combo deck mm -hmm. was, uh, was very popular. And so all the pieces are there. You've got Cadaverous Bloom, you've got resource. Prosperity, uh -huh. Squandered Resources, there's even a Drain Life in in the mm -hmm. Soul Canar deck over Meditate. here. Uh, the one piece we're missing is Dark Ritual. Mm -hmm. However, Black Lotus is, is in this Serves format. a pretty good substitute. So it's a, it's a decent substitute. We'll be able to handle it. Don't worry, the combo deck won't win every round because there's another deck that we've thought of that's <laughs> yep. like sort of a blue-white control thing. Uh, Millstone, I believe, is another card. Along uh, with I don't know if Millstone is in, but there's... Dissipate, a, Dissipate, yep. Um, wow. In Advance is and another advance strong option against, against the, the combo deck. And all of the decks have copies of Jester's Cap. Uh-huh. Which, uh, so you which move the three, uh, you know, cadaverous blooms, and it's going to be pretty difficult for your opponent to win. Yeah, or even just, it, assuming they don't have the drain life in their hand, yeah. they take out the one drain life, uh, and, and you'll be able to feed that deck. So this is one of the most fun formats, because when you're playing Magic, it's introduced to you as you're this wizard, commanding powerful spells. Huge creatures. And when you've played for as long as I have, you're, you, you're, you're used to playing Magic. Mm -hmm. Right? And it's very self-contained, and you're within your little tabletop area, sometimes you're even cramped. This is so freeing in that you can just windmill slam huge very flavorful and uh -huh. elementals and shivan dragons. It's like Sarah being a little Angels. kid again. Oh, yeah. Because the cards are basically as big as I was when I was 12, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just a ton of fun, and thank you so much for bringing it over and showing to us. Uh, you're from Waterbury, Connecticut. Correct. And so you will you come out to a lot of the Northeast Magic events. Yeah, you know, a fewer as, as life has moved on, I've had more responsibilities, but I, I enjoy coming to events like this, playing in the competitive event, and if I don't do so well, breaking out something casual like this. Absolutely. This is a, a, just a fabulous... I've never even thought about this, <laughs> and I want to build it now. And I, I want them for myself, and because it's so fun uh -huh. and so cool. And uh, I really appreciate you bringing it over. And if you ever see him at a Northeast Magic event, call up Ray and, uh, and, and shove some tables together and have yourself some fun with some chaos orbs being flipped from four feet in the air mm -hmm. and windows slamming like some big stuff. So this is awesome, and thank you so much for coming to the sideboard. Thank you for having me. Roy Robillard. Uh, I am Ruben Bressler, and we are here at Star City Games Booster.